Hey, what's up, chitheads? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the Ingwe M20. I've heard people refer to these style of bikes in a few different ways, either called moped style, moto style, or cafe racer style. So I'm not really sure what the technical term is. Either way, I think it's all just a way to describe these bikes that have the 20 inch fat tires and more of a motorcycle look. And as of right now, this bike starts at a price of $999 for the single battery version, or $1,199 for the dual battery version you see here. But what do you say we take a closer look at it and then we'll go take it for a test drive. Does it sound like a good time to you guys? Yeah, come on guys, let's get right into it. So here we are up close and personal with the Mgue M20. No, I think I really like the look of this bike. It looks like a little motorcycle. I like the, the white color. The, this bike is available in three different colors. This cat is only available in one color. So this bike is available in white, green, or black. And I think the white is the best looking color because I really like the way the white and the black contrast. We're gonna start right at the front here and work our way back. So this bike is equipped with 20 by four inch fat tires. Mag wheels, I think are really nice looking, gives this bike a distinct look. It has metal fenders front and rear, has a dual crown fork in the front. This fork only offers compression adjustments on the right here. It has this cool looking dual headlight setup. And one thing I did wanna point out since I didn't do an unboxing here, I heard a few people say that they had a difficult time putting this headlight on due to this bracket here. Honestly, I didn't think it was the hardest thing to do, but a little pro tip is you can disconnect the headlights from the bracket before you install this onto the bike to make it easier. This bike has the dual battery setup. Funny little sticker here, it says, do not touch the charging port with metal objects, which is kind of a bummer because usually the first thing I like to do when I get these e-bikes is touch the charging port with metal objects. So unfortunately I won't be doing it on this bike. But I think I know why they said that. It's because this has this little weather stripping you pop down over the port and getting it off there is not very easy. So I'm assuming they probably had some people that stuck metal in there to pry the, the weather strip out and ended up frying their battery. So keep that in mind guys, you don't want to do that. Each battery here has an on and off switch so you can turn off on and off the power. And it has a separate charging port on each battery, which is something I'm not too fond of. With this bike, you're going to have to plug it in and then make an effort to come back later and unplug it and plug in the other battery. So each one of these batteries is 13 amp hours. So giving you a total of 26 amp hours, which works out to be about just over 1200 watt hours of capacity. So this bike has quite a bit of capacity. This bike comes with standard with a two amp charger, which will take roughly six and a half hours to charge each battery pack from dead to full or a total of 13 hours for both battery packs. Has your typical black Welgo pedals. I like these pedals. Some of the e-bikes I've gotten over the years now have had really bad pedals. These black Welgo pedals that come on a lot of e-bikes are pretty nice. It has a front and rear suspension. The front has compression adjustment, like I mentioned. The back is non-adjustable and it's a HLT 100 shock. I'm 240 pounds and you can see it doesn't move very much. So I'm not really fond of the fact that you can't adjust this rear shock but more on that later. The back rear has a 750 watt hub motor, which is integrated into the mag wheel. Underneath the seat here is a, a 48 volt 20 amp controller. So that's gonna put out just shy of a thousand watts peak for this motor combination. Now the seat here is an Ingwe branded seat. It's padded. And I've heard some people say it's pretty stiff. And let me make a comparison here. Yes, this is a stiff seat and it's non-adjustable. And unfortunately, if you do want to change it to an aftermarket seat, there's not going to be options because this seat is bolted to this frame in a proprietary fashion. So I saw a video where a guy rigged up his own seat, but unfortunately, you're going to have to live to learn to like this seat. And I think it's fine. It has a rear integrated tail light. Also works as a brake light when you hit the brake handles. The Ingwe M20 comes equipped with 160 millimeter mechanical disc brakes front and rear. I would have liked to seen at least hydraulic disc brakes on this bike and probably 180 millimeter rotor. Up here on the cockpit, we have these like rubberized filling grips. 
It has a full twist throttle, which is pretty unique. It's the first e-bike I've seen with a full twist. It has these unbranded mechanical disc brake levers here. They feel okay, not the worst. It has these BMX style handlebars and everyone's absolute favorite Shimano seven speed shifter here. So to turn on the bike, you press, hold down the top button here. And as soon as the bike comes on, there's gonna be the running lights are always on on this bike. So this display gives you the basic information you're gonna need as your speedometer, pedal assist level here. To toggle through pedal assist, you press the up and down buttons here on the bottom. Uh, this took me a bit to get used to because typically e-bikes will have the pedal assist selector right here. So I found myself while I'm riding, pressing the horn or turning on and off the light on accident. So toggling through the pedal assist levels this is gonna take you a little bit to get used to on this bike. So tapping the power button here, we'll go through your memory settings here. But all in all, this is a pretty basic display, gives you everything you're gonna need, but no extra information. Ideally, I'd like it if this display showed the output wattage and if it showed the voltage on the battery. But overall, this, is, this display is fine. Turn on and off the headlight, you press the headlight button here, and it has a horn. Now, Mgway claims this bike weighs 94 pounds with a single battery and 104 pounds with the dual battery. While it does feel heavy, as all e-bikes do, I find that this, with the form factor of this bike, it's easier to handle than some bikes that are lighter than this, but are bigger and bulkier. So yes, this bike is heavy, but I have no problem moving it around. I'm six foot two, and here's what I look like sitting on this bike. This bike is not the most ergonomic for pedaling, which is why I found myself, right when I was riding this bike, I was mainly doing throttle. But here's what it looks like. It was a comfortable riding it, it's just not the most comfortable pedaling. So check this out. This is a 26 inch BMX style bike. You don't get a bike like this because it's ergonomic or fun to ride long distances. You get a bike like this because it looks cool and it's fun to ride. And that's exactly what the Mgway M20 does. It looks cool and it's fun to ride. So I find it more comparable to riding a BMX style bike rather than trying to do a cross country or comfortable cruising or touring style bike. Don't I look cool right now? Now we've gone over all the specs and features of the Mgway M20. What do you say we go do the fun part and take it for a ride? Come on guys, let's go. All right guys, we are out on the Mgway M20. And the first thing you wanna do is switch this from kilometers per hour to miles per hour. This ships by default at kilometers. So what you want to do is press the plus and minus button at the same time. It's going to bring you to the menu. Toggle through using the plus button, the P4. Tap the power button and you're going to change it from zero to one. And that's going to get you to kilometers per hour. And now we're ready to go. Let's see how the pedal assist settings work on this bike. So we're in pedal assist one now. And I'm noticing the power definitely gradually ramps in with this, with this bike. It's not going to just hit right away. So pedal assist one goes up to 15. It's like pedal assist two goes up to 18. So pedal assist three goes up to about 21. Pedal assist four is giving us assistance up to about 25. And five is gonna take us the rest of the way up to a top, top speed of 28. Something I do wanna point out with this pedal assist system here, there's quite a big delay between when you're pedaling and when the assistance actually kicks in. So it's like a few seconds. This is like, this bike has the most delay between pedaling and power that I've ever felt. And from a dead stop, it feels like the power kicks in faster than it does when you're already, when you're already moving. But the power doesn't come in automatic right away. It really eases in, it really ramps in. So maybe that's why it's not as easy to notice when you're already moving. With that being said, I found myself using the throttle more because there's a very, there's a little delay on the throttle, but it's not much at all. So I find myself using the throttle for a second or so while I'm pedaling and then it catches up. First time I used a full twist throttle on an e-bike, I wasn't sure how I'd like it based on, you know, hitting bumps and worrying about my hand moving positions but I, I think it's fine. So this bike has a 750 watt rear motor, peaks around 1,000 watts. I think it's rated at 55 Newton meters of torque and that's exactly what it feels like. It's not gonna blow you away with power, but uh, it's quick enough to get you moving. And if you guys are noticing, you can hear the brakes squealing. And unfortunately, every bike I've ridden with mechanical brakes, for some reason or another, it seems like they squeal. 
But more on the brakes in a minute. I wanted to point out a super random thing that happened to me on this bike. And the tip of the kickstand broke off. I don't actually remember this happening. I know I just went to put it down once and it was gone. So I could have hit something. I don't know how it happened, but the tip of the kickstand is now missing. Yeah, that's a first. So this has got the 20 by four inch fat tires and uh, I've ridden a couple bikes with these on them now. And I have to say, I'm liking them. They're better for these smaller form factors. That's for sure. And these little moped style bikes. You kind of zip around a little more. And while this bike is rated, I believe at 100 pounds with both the batteries, it doesn't feel that heavy at all. I was able to pick it up and maybe it's because it's smaller and you can get a grip on the frame easier. But I don't have much of a problem moving this bike around. Well, let's do give it the rock test here. Definitely feel it squirming around in the rocks, but uh, it makes it through there. So I'm on throttle only right now. The one thing I noticed with this bike is um, it doesn't blow you away with the speed right off the bat, but it just keeps climbing. We'll try that more on a smoother surface here in a minute. This bike has metal fenders front and rear. So when I do ride over these rocks, I'm hearing little, hearing the pebbles bounce off now and then. It's to be expected. So let me give you an idea what the suspension looks like in action. This has a HLT 100 rear shock and I've tested this on another bike. It's very firm. As a matter of fact, I don't know what, how much travel it's rated at, but you can see here, I'm 245 pounds. And if I just slam down on it, it's not moving very much. So the rear shock is very stiff. The front, you can only adjust the compression on the front fork, but you can see here, the front gives you a little bit of travel, but it, then again, it's not, a, it's not a ton of travel either. This bike is definitely more set up for dedicated road use, in my opinion. Keep it in mind, the way you get this bike from the factory is not, there's not a ton of travel in the suspension, but it does help soak up the bumps along the way. One of the things I like the most about this bike is the way it looks. I really like the moto style design on this bike. The integrated tail light locks, lights up whenever you hit the brakes. I just think it's a really cool looking frame. What do you guys think? This, since this seat is non-adjustable, that it puts you in a you know position where you're not gonna get the full extension of your legs. And that's true. You don't get the full extension of your legs, but to me, this bike is more comparable to riding a BMX bike where you're not riding it to get the full extension and maximize the efficiency of every stroke of the pedal. You're riding this bike because A, it looks really cool, and you want to go out and have fun. You're not riding this bike to uh, stay on it for hours of the time in the saddle. That being said, this saddle is very firm. I haven't had any issues with it. I've put about 25 miles on this bike so far. It's not my favorite saddle, but um, it, it does the job if you ask me. Unfortunately, the way this bike is designed, you can't swap the seat because it's integrated into the design of the bike. You can't swap this with a universal bike seat. So it is what it is. If you find that this seat is intolerable, you'll have to take it upon yourself to modify it. Because uh, as of now, I don't think there are any options to replace it. The other kind of funny thing about this bike is the plus and minus button for the pedal assist is on the bottom of the controller here. And I'm so used to putting pushing in buttons on the side here. I find myself that you're turning on the bright or hitting the horn on accident. So you have to kind of like move your hand underneath to change the pedal assist level up and down. It takes a little getting used to. This bike kind of keeps accelerating and just creeps up to its max speed. I had it at a max of 26 miles an hour earlier. Let's see what I can do now. Let's keep in mind I'm 245 pounds. I'm not exactly the lightest rider. 23, 22. 23, 24, slash 24. Maybe we're gonna have to slow down here. Where I really enjoy riding this bike is on these smoother trails like this. And these little fat tires kind of just eat up the little ruts in the road and you can just zip right around on them. So it's been fun to ride on this terrain out here, which is I have a lot of around my house. 
You know, kind of funny now we end up talking about the brakes or lack of brakes on bikes. And, you know, it reminds me when I was a kid, I had at least one bike that didn't even have brakes. I used my foot as a brake. Has any, did any of you guys have that? And then nowadays we're talking about what size or what type of brake, you know, disc brakes our bikes have and if they're good enough or not. It's kind of funny how times change and we just get completely spoiled. Well, this bike has 160 millimeter rotors and mechanical disc brakes. Unfortunately, they do squeal quite a bit, but the most important thing is they do work. And uh, let's demonstrate that now. So let's get uh, test the brakes here. I'm gonna get up to 20 miles an hour. Woo! So the brakes definitely work. And one thing I've noticed with these mechanical disc brakes is you just have to squeeze the handles harder in order to get them to give you the stopping power you want. Where hydraulic is just a more smooth experience. And unfortunately, for whatever reason, Mechanical disc brakes tend to squeal. That would be one of the first things I would do on this bike as I'd upgrade the brakes to hydraulic disc brakes. But the brakes that come on the bike function fine if they're gonna stop you. That's, let's be honest guys, that's what matters, right? <laughs> we'll see how well the Mgway N20 does on the street. You know, currently this bike's listed at $11.99 for the dual battery setup and $9.99 for the single battery setup. I think that's a fair price. And honestly, at the end of this video, guys, I'll tell you what I think this bike is perfectly suited to do. But if you're getting into this bike thinking you're going to make a long range commuter bike, probably not your best choice. I think one of your uh, number one priorities when you get this bike is looking cool while you're out there riding and I think it achieves that goal for sure because this is a really cool looking bike. So it's kind of neat with the dual battery setup. There's a battery blender that's set up in the back so it draws ba power from each battery equally and from my, I don't really know the exact details on how it all works but it sounds like it's going to drain your batteries at an equal rate even if you put one in there that's more charged than the other it'll charge it'll drain that one first and then it'll drain the other one as needed. So that's kind of a neat thing. Is that guy looking? So I'm noticing on those dips right there, the rear shock is not, there's not much travel and I'm bottoming it out pretty easy. Even though it's stiff, there's not much travel there. So you still end up bottoming it out. So the throttle definitely has a soft start. It eases into the power. Definitely not gonna be winning any street races with this one. It gives you a nice smooth power delivery get you where you need to go it takes a while to get up to speed that's for sure so these 20 by 4 inch tires are definitely more maneuverable than the bigger tires you can kind of zip around and change direction fast which has positives and negatives positives are you can change directions fast the negatives are you can also change directions a little too fast so if you're not paying attention and you just shift your weight around you can end up turning and uh, having a bad outcome so it takes a little getting used to but it's a different feeling. We are on the uh, shortcut path. And while if you can do this, I'm finding that the suspension on this bike is a little too stiff to be testing people like off-road. This is definitely a more street-oriented uh, suspension setup. I would still take this path, but you, uh, you're gonna wanna choose your, you're gonna wanna choose your path wisely and not end up in uh, some place you're gonna regret. Because while this does have rear suspension, this bike more rides almost like it's a hardtail very firm this bike is a very firm foundation and that's not necessarily a bad thing i think it's just this is a very solid filling bike we are at the hill test and guys let me tell you right away i don't have high expectations for this i need to find a less steep hill to test these bikes out on because it's this is a kind of a bit much so i'm in the lowest gear and i'm in pedal assist five let's see how the mgway m20 does Already it's struggling. Now I'm, I am up out of the saddle right now. You know what guys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and stick with this one the whole way. All right, back down in the saddle, We're still going. I'm cranking away though. It is not easy, but easier than if it was a regular bike. All right, we 
we're still in the saddle, still going. Woo! Burning. Stand back up. And we made it. If hill climbing is your number one priority, the M20 is probably not going to be for you. What do you girls think of the Engway M20? It's a nice looking bike, right? All right, you ladies have a nice day. So there you have it. This has been the Imgway M20. Now overall, I really like this bike. Aesthetically, this bike looks awesome. I like the dual headlights. It's got plenty of capacity with the two battery packs. Mag wheels look great. Some things I don't like so much about this bike, I'm not a fan of these mechanical disc brakes. The rear shock is extremely stiff, making for a not so pleasant ride. And the pedal assist system on this bike leaves quite a bit to be desired. With that being said, I think this bike especially at the price point, makes an attractive offer for people who want to buy this style of bike and then modify it from there. As a matter of fact, that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. I've already ordered a hydraulic disc brake kit, an upgraded rear shock, and I'm going to be doing what's known as a shunt mod to get about 1500 watts out of the controller on this bike. But keep in mind, if you do that yourself, you're definitely going to avoid the warranty. So, I'll be releasing a video in the future doing those mods to this bike. But however guys, if you're interested in buying an Ingwe M20, please consider using the link in the description of this video. Doing so does help support the channel. So I can continue doing awesome reviews just like this one. Anyways guys, thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, leave a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Take care.